Hello everyone, welcome to the 15th episode of Peculiar with me, Akin. So right after I made Bowser, I was like, there ain't no way I'm not making Princess Peach to accompany him, so in this episode, we're gonna cover exactly that. But of course, we're gonna have to yesify her so she'll match my Bowser, but how do we yesify a character that's already yesified to begin with? I don't know, we'll see. She's gonna surf cunt. If you think cunt is that bit of a word, you're Australian phobic. Also, what about the British people who say the word can't, hmm? Speaking of yassified cunt surfing dolls, of course I'm gonna have to reference Hextian for this. I mean, have you seen dolls of Hextian? Anyway, let's just begin the process. For the body, I was considering to use a Raven Queen, only to realize I only have one left in my stock box. But here I got three apple whites, so let's just use one of them, a second hand one to be exact. Looking at it again, apple white is a better choice for Princess Peach. I don't know why I consider Raven Queen first. We're not gonna use Apple White's head, obviously, we don't really like ever after high girl heads around here, but just for fun, let's clean it up. The head was really firm, so I was sure there'd be a lot of glue in it. Just like I expected, the glue kind of melted because of the hot water, so the head remained sticky. It was pretty gross. Let's remove the factory paint using acetone. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna use this head in the future. Why did I bother doing this? The doll is a second hand, so I cleaned the body with some wet wipes. Now for the head that we're actually gonna use. I got some options here. How about Draculara? No. Spectra? Her cheekbones are too prominent. Nope. Scara? I think her face sculpt is pretty similar to Spectra's, plus she has pointy ears, so no. Luna Mothew? Definitely not, I just randomly bought this loose head. I was pretty sure I was gonna use this Frankie's head, but her jawline is so strong and I had time to look for something better, and I eventually found this. An Ari Huntington's head. I got this from AliExpress, I think it's a factory reject or something because the scalp doesn't have any holes. She has an oval shaped face and her features are soft, I think this is the best choice for Princess Peach. Let's remove the factory paint with acetone. The head is kinda translucent and it's shimmery, it looks really cool actually. She's gonna wear earrings, so let's pierce the ears now. Piercing them after the face is done will most likely crack the face, let's prevent that by doing this beforehand. Now we can clean the head with wet wipes. Let's attach the head to the body. Not all monster high heads are compatible with an ever after high body, some of them end up wobbly. See how to fix that in my Cassandra video. But this pairing is fully compatible, so we won't have to do any tweaks. Here I'm remixing paint to color match the head. Actually, we can use the Apple White's head for reference. Let's protect the body with cling wrap and masking tape so it won't get painted when we airbrush the head. Now we can start the face up. Thank you. 
I think this was on the sixth layer of MSC, I was halfway done with the face, but the pigment from the watercolor pencil still wouldn't build up, so I was like, let's just spray it another layer, but then... We were all so happy that day. It's, it's actually hard to even imagine how terrible things would soon become. This happened. A big ass dust particle got stuck on her left cheek and it wouldn't come off. I tried to pick it up with a toothpick but I ended up scraping the paint. Fuck my entire life, right? And little did I know this was the beginning of my suffering. I had no idea how to salvage any of the progress so I just decided to start over. Doing this was pretty brutal because my failed attempt at Bowser's original body and now this, like am I running out of luck or something? I even made a box as a makeshift airbrush station in hope of minimizing dust, but if anything this just made things worse. I airbrushed most of my dolls and sure specks of dust got stuck on them all the time but they were never as severe as this project. I don't even know why, maybe because it was just a very dry day so a lot of dust was flying around. Also I was usually able to cover them with beards or something, obviously we can do that for this doll. See, the results just kept on being a disappointment. I even tried to paint it with a regular brush. But I hated the result, I ended up wiping the head clean, again. At this point I was so frustrated I was about to start praying. A tip I find to be kind of helpful is to spray the area where you airbrush with water. It's gonna weigh down the dust that's flying around so it won't get stuck to the thing you airbrush. I did that. After 10 tries, you heard that right, I tried to paint the head 10 FUCKING TIMES! I got this decent result. It's not even perfect, only decent. I spent a whole week trying to paint the head, I even considered to cancel the project altogether because of it. I mean this was supposed to be very straightforward, just color matching the head, you know? This project taught me simpler doesn't always mean easier. I gave the head 5 layers of paint, usually 4 layers would do the job but this head needed more, probably because it was kind of translucent. I didn't want to give it more layer of paint because that could make doing the face up risky. And afterwards, I gave it 3 initial layers of MSC. You know what, let's do an MSC layer count. On this layer, I do the initial blushing using pink and light brown watercolor pencil. What the fuck? Using pink and light brown soft pastel on the cheeks, ears, a little bit on the chin and nose, and the eyelid area. I sprayed it again with MSC and on this layer, using soft pastel, I mapped the eyebrows and colored the lips. Still on the same layer, I start sketching the eyes using light brown watercolor pencil, which has a my oval eye, so that's what I'm going for. I'm pretty happy with the shape of the eyes, now we can start coloring the sclera's white and fill the irises light blue, just to initiate the coloring. Here I'm filling her eyebrows with yellow watercolor pencil. I know Peach has tiny eyebrows but I just simply can't do that, I don't want to. The eyebrows I'm giving her are still pretty thin though, so... While I'm at it, I also sketch the clumpy top lashes. Peach doesn't have any bottom lashes so I'm not gonna give her any. We really do a lot on layer 4. Another layer of MSC and I start saturating the lips but only the middle part to mimic Peach's lips. On this layer I start building up the colors and gradients on the eyes, also adding details like the water lines and eyebrow hairs.
Another fresh spray of MSC and now we can really define the eye lines using strong colors like black and dark brown as well as filling the pupils. Now it's just a matter of building up the colors until you get your desired opacity. When the pencils get slippery when you draw on the face, then it's time for a fresh spray of MSC. Time for the most important part of every face up, wet the tip of a white watercolor pencil and using a tiny brush, dot on the eye shines. Seal the face with a generous final layer of MSC and the face is done after 9 layers of it. The eyes that I do are pretty simple, just simple gradient with darker shade on top and lighter shade on bottom. I don't think they're special, but this is what I know and comfortable with and I still like them so I just stick with this style. Let's see how I do with the color matching. The head turned out to be significantly lighter than the body because I had to remix the paint again. Do I have to remind you I tried painting the head 10 times? But the color difference isn't off-putting so whatever. I'm not sure how I feel about the eyelashes honestly but I still think she turned out pretty and she looks like Princess Peach alright so I'm taking this as a win considering all the bullshit I went through to get to this point. For the hair I got two hangs of yellow acrylic yarn here. This one is from the brand I usually use, the fiber is kinda thin so it's easier to brush out but this one seems to have a cooler tone. This one is from a more expensive brand, the fiber is thicker but at the same time it's more fragile and a lot harder to brush out but it has a warmer tone. I was going to use the one with the warmer tone to give an illusion that the color of the head and body match perfectly. But after I made weft samples out of the two yarns, they don't really look different from each other so I just went with the one I usually use. Now we can mark the weft placement. There will be three sections, the ponytail, the side bangs, and the bangs. Then I mark and drill two holes where the ponytail would be, like so. Then I thread a piece of string through the holes. Then thread it back in but not all the way, creating a loop. I insert a strand of yellow acrylic yarn to the loop and pull the string. I don't trust a glued rolled weft, I feel like this makes a much stronger base for the ponytail. Doing this actually cracked the face, what the fuck is up with this doll's face up, god damn it! So I had to spray it again with MSC to kinda conceal the crack. I felt nervous every time I had to spray the face, I was afraid a big ass dust particle would get stuck on it, again, but luckily it was fine. I trimmed the strand because it was too long and I started gluing the webs around it to fill the ponytail. Hextian calls this the keratin treatment. I actually had to research to see if Peach has a ponytail in some games to make sure I wasn't making things up. I don't play Super Mario games so I wouldn't know for sure. And she has sported a ponytail in some games. We're done filling the ponytail and now we can start gluing wefts around the bottom of the nape like so.
To fill the ponytail section, we're gonna glue webs radiating out from the ponytail itself. Now we can tie the ponytail with some elastics, pull up the webs on the nape and tie them along with it. And we're done with the ponytail section. Looking pretty good. Moving on to the side bang section, I'm gonna glue web for the side burn stingy. I'm gonna trim them right away to make things more manageable when we style the hair later. Now we can start filling the side bang section. When we get to the part, glue a web in the opposite direction so we can flip it to the right direction creating a clean part. Then we can start gluing webs to make the part for the actual bangs. Do the process to the other side of the side bang section and this is what we have, now we can fill the bangs. Let's trim and shape the bangs to get that pointy shape. Tame the hair with a wet toothbrush. Then press it down with a heated metal tool to kinda guide the hair so it lays in the right direction. Now we can trim the hair. Do this carefully to each section, you don't want to end up cutting the hair too short. I separate each side of the side bangs into two sections. Time to style the hair using my favorite doll hair styling product, watered down glue. Sure, it makes the hair stiff, but it's really effective if you're going for a very slick or sharp hairstyle, kinda like this one. Also, it doesn't really discolor the yarn web, not so much at least. See how I style the bangs here. To style the side bangs, apply the watered down glue to every section and clamp it to shape the pointy tip. The pointy tips on top seem to be a bit too long so I'm gonna trim them and I'm gonna have to apply more watered down glue afterwards. And we're done styling the bangs and the side bangs. Look pretty cool, right? I wish I had made the bangs a bit fuller because it's really flat now, but whatever. Before we style the ponytail, I'm gonna replace the elastics with binding of matching thread. You know I don't trust elastics as hair ties because they will snap eventually. Now we can style the ponytail. We're actually done styling the hair, would you look at that? I think I aced the hair styling, so that feels pretty great. For the earrings, I bought these fake pearl earrings, they were really cheap, like 3 cents a pair, so I bought some of them. Peach's earrings, sometimes they look cobalt blue, sometimes they look light blue, kinda like turquoise. I got the earrings in those colors here, I like the turquoise better, so I'm gonna go with that. The doll itself is done, we can put her aside for now. You know what, I'm gonna come clean to you guys. Her face up isn't perfect at all. There's a long crack under her left eye and there's small ones above it. Also, there's a pain bump right in the middle of her nose. But luckily, the camera doesn't pick up any of these imperfections. They're visible only if you look really really closely. 
So let's just pretend they don't exist, yeah? This video is sponsored by my sanity, my persistence, and my bank account. So please consider donating through my coffee page and if you can't donate, please share my videos. More watch time for me would be really great. Actually, I kinda wanna talk about my situation. If you don't wanna hear it, just skip this part, I'll put a timestamp. So it's been 3 months since the last time I got my cut from managing the building, which is my source of income. It's a family business so obviously I don't get to take the whole profit made from renting the units. Because of reasons like some units aren't rented or some tenants are late paying rent, I had to sacrifice my cut to cover the bills and the mortgage and this kinda makes me worried like what if this keeps on happening? So I really need your help to grow my channel, I know you don't owe me anything and it's completely my choice to keep making these videos, but I wanna do this for a living. I don't normally share my hopes and dreams, but there it is. Not to be self conceited but I feel like I deserve to do this for a living, you know? To be completely honest, I really don't want to manage the building anymore, I just can't deal with people in that way anymore. And if this isn't what I do next, then I don't know what is. You might ask, why don't I just set up a Patreon or a YouTube membership? Not that I hate the idea of exclusivity, it's just I have no idea how to approach it. Simply put, I wouldn't know what to give you as a reward. Also, if I got something to share, I would rather share it to everybody or nobody at all, not just some. So I personally feel better taking donation than subscription. So yeah, I'm asking you to help me grow my channel, however you're gonna do it, whether through donation or just simply share my content. That would mean a lot to me and I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Let's get back to the video. For the outfit, I'll be making it out of this pink version of the black material I use for Bowser. I bought this fabric from AliExpress, at this point they should give me coupons. I really like the characteristic of this wet look PVC fabric, it's stretchy and it doesn't fray. The only thing I hate about it is how difficult it is to sew. This looks like an underwear but this is actually the pattern for the top. I wanna make her a halter top and I start by hemming the armholes. I tried doing that using my sewing machine but it was being a total fucking bitch, I mean, what's new? When will sewing machines behave and do their job without making any fuss, honestly? The sewing isn't anything excessive so let's just do that by hand. When I hand sew, I always do back stitch because that type of stitching can handle stretching, plus it looks nice. Now we can hem the bottom part. I cut a rectangle like this and hem one of the long sides but not all the way, only about one third. When you get to the middle, we can sew it to the neck part of the body, then complete the hemming. It should look like this, then trim the excess seam allowance. After hemming the other side, we're done with the neck band. I already hemmed the opening tabs, now we can sew the snaps. And we're done with the top. It looks pretty cool and pretty easy to make. Moving on to the skirt, I wanna make a double slit mini skirt and here's the pattern. I'm gonna sew the front piece to the back pieces. Then I cut notches in the corners to release tension. Then we can start hemming slash top stitching along all the seams like so. It should look something like this. This was when I realized I could have made the skirt out of a one piece pattern because it's flat. But if I did that, we wouldn't have gotten the top stitching detail, so whatever I guess. Anyway, let's hem the waistline. Sew up the back seams. Attach hook and eye for closure. 
And we're done with the skirt. I really like the way it turned out. The back looks awkward, but nobody cares about that. I decided to sew two little tubes for sleeves. Fashion Nova died. Also, I don't think my hand stitching is shitty. For the shoes, I wanna make tie high boots following Hexty and Sasha video using the same material we use for the outfit but in white. Gluing the loose material to the shoes was kinda scary because you only have one shot, so do it per section and pull the fabric as tight as possible so you won't get any wrinkles. I use super glue for this. But even then, I still got a wrinkle, but we're going to ignore that. Let's trim the excess material. We're gonna have to cover this later because the seams aren't very pristine looking. For the gem on her top, I found this gem that is already in the right color, shape, and size. To be honest, I don't really like buying gems like this. They're not expensive or anything, it's because we can buy just one or two of them. The least amount I could buy this one was a hundred of them. Like what the fuck am I supposed to do with all this? I also got this metallic gold platter swatch, really shiny. Using super glue, I'm gonna stick the gem on it and cut around it but bigger to get that gold border. Now we can glue it to the front center of her top. I cut strips out of the gold platter and glue them around the opening of the boots. This is why I didn't even bother to hem those parts. Using the same material, I'm gonna cover the seams between the shoes and the final fabric. They don't look that great, but they're not the main focus, so just back off a little bit, okay? I really like the outfit, it's giving Sailor Moon or Totally Spice vibes. It kinda looks futuristic, almost, for some reason. That's alright, I guess. A fur coat would definitely complete this look. I made one out of this white fuzzy fabric. The coat looks very structured and sophisticated, but it's too much white. Pink should be the dominant color for her outfit. And the only pink fur fabric I have looks like this. I had a hard time cutting this material, I've never cut this kind of material before. I didn't even line or hem this coat because I'm afraid it would end up bulky and frankly, I was lazy. It gives so much drama and fabulousness and for the sake of cohesiveness, I'm gonna go with this one. But which one do you actually prefer? It's kinda crazy how different the results look even though I used the same pattern to make them. I didn't explain how to make the coat because I covered that in my Miranda's video. Just lengthen the bodies. For accessories, here I'm painting her nails blue. I also paint this thing blue. I think this is Gilda Goldstag's earring. It's an open ring so I can just slip it around the base of the ponytail to make it a hair tie. Protect the paint job with 3 layers of watered down gloss varnish. I wanna apologize for not giving her a crown, I even made a poll regarding that on my Instagram. The majority of you don't mind it, but a good amount of you still wanna see her with a crown. I know not giving her a crown is not exactly a favorable decision, but I just think it doesn't match my concept and it looked too much. Also with her hair and that blue gem on her top, I think people would still know she's Princess Peach. I hope you guys understand. And finally, we can call it a doll. So what do you think of Iggy Azalea? I mean, my take on Princess Peach. Do you like her? Do you not like her? Is she serving enough cunt? Let me know your opinions about her in the comment section down below. I like her, especially the hair and the outfit, but the setbacks and mishaps during the face-up just ruined the experience for me. 
Also, I'm sorry if some of the pictures and the footage don't look good. Photography and videography are not my forte. I'm kind of obsessed with the idea of big burly muscular man being a henchman to a boss lady, a girl boss. That's the vibe I'm trying to give from this too. What actually jump started me to start this doll was this picture of a girl looking at a guy's chest and lo and behold. Did I make a whole doll just so I could recreate a meme? Yes. This is the end of this video, hope you enjoyed it, like and subscribe if you want to, see you in the next one, bye!